Hootie who all my stock market gamblers. Welcome today. I'm Tall Mike. So glad you're here. Well, what do we got going on? It's a big week, right? I mean, we got the Fed announcement coming this week. It's the official pivot, if you will. Now, the Fed, they're going to lower by, well, I say by 25 basis points. Some people say by 50 basis points. Is it the right move for the Fed to pivot? I say absolutely not. They haven't won anything. Inflation's still going up, still waving, you know, they're waving that white flag, right? They've given up. They don't want to fight inflation. They want inflation. Inflation. They want prices to go higher. They want it to go higher. And it will go higher. Look at they're cutting rates into a record high stock market, record high real estate prices, and they're cutting rates. Why? Why? Well, they're trying to save the system, the system that they messed up. Now, I do think that when they do the pivot, they cut the rates, it will push the S&P to new record highs. Now, maybe the NASDAQ reaches a new record high, but I don't think so. I think it'll get close. I think you'll get right up and we'll kind of like have a double top and that'll mark the end. That'll be where we start to go down. This is just my take. Now, you moon boys, you think this is just going to double, triple from here. And maybe you're right. Maybe they're going to print so much money that we will double and triple. But that's not my take. My take is bear market has already started in the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ might get close to a new record, but probably will not hit a new record before it starts coming down. Just my take. Yours may be completely different. All right, let's talk a little bit about the Fed since it is Fed week, since they are going to be cutting rates and coming out with the official pivot. Let's talk about the 100 years before the Fed was in power. 100 years before the Fed was in power, how did our purchasing power do? Well, our purchasing power doubled. It doubled. It went it doubled. It went from 100% to 200%. You could buy twice as much goods as you could the previous 100 years earlier. So 100 years before the Fed, purchasing power doubled. Now, since the Fed started, they've wiped out 98% of our purchasing power, 98%. You see, the Fed is not helpful. The Fed is our enemy. The Fed is a criminal organization. The Fed is stealing our money. This is my take. This is just my take. A lot of people love the Fed. They come in at the Congress. They love the Fed. They come in, they kiss Jerome's butt, right? Jerome comes in and talks. They go, oh, thank you for saving us. Thank you for saving us. Look at, they started the fire, the arsonists, right? They're the arsonists, and they're coming in as the firefighter trying to put it out. No, it was their problem. They started it, and they're not the hero for coming in and putting it out. I'm sorry, they're not. All right, let me just tell you exactly how it works. All right, in 1913, when the Fed started, right, they had automobiles. Do you know what an automobile cost? Ah, less than a thousand, but let's go with a thousand, right? Thousand dollars for your typical automobile in 1913, okay? And then the Fed starts, right? All right. Now, what was an ounce of gold in 1913? Well, it's about $20, right? About $20. So anyway, so that'd be 50 ounces of gold, $20, 50 ounces to buy, to buy a car, to buy a nice car, right? Okay, uh, Ford, Model T, whatever. Okay, so you got bought the nice car. Let's move forward till today. Where's the car selling for today? The average, the average. let's just go with the average. It's a touch below 50,000. Let's go with 49,000, but let's go with 50,000 because that way I can do the math. Nice round number, 50,000, right? Okay, what's an ounce of gold? That's once again, round numbers, that's called 2,500. So it takes 20 ounces of gold to buy that car today, right? Where it took 50 ounces back then. So if you had your money in real money all along, you would be less than, it'd take less than half your money to buy the average price car, right? Okay, so what's really devalued? It's the currency. It's the currency. They devalued the currency. You see, that went from $1,000 to buy the car to 49000 up 49 times. But if you did it in gold, it went from 50 ounces back here down to what? Well, Let's call it 25 ounce, 20 ounces, right? 20 ounces. Okay. 
So you'd be do really well if you saved in gold and not in currency. Now, I wish someone taught me this a long time ago, right? See, I was a saver. I was a saver. I'd put my money in the bank, you know, get my 2 or 3%. And I was a saver, right? But nobody taught me to save in real money. See, they're destroying the fake money, the currency, the fiat system is getting crushed, right? Those dollars are going to go to zero. You have to save in real money. And I was a saver my whole life, right? I'd take 10% of what I made, right? And I'd save that. Now, the first 10%, I'd do what's called tithing. Now, if you're a religious person, you know that means giving the money to God. You see, I believe that God has always provided for me. I've always lived in nice places, always driven nice cars, always had food to eat. That's because I'm a tither. I give the first 10% to God. It's a my way of looking at it. he provides a hundred percent I give him ten percent now I'm a real estate guy now if you get a real estate referral right I mean you have to give the agent that gave you the referral about 25 30 percent do you know how, how many miracle referrals I've gotten from God and I mean it's it, it, I can tell you story after story after story at listings I should never get in my wildest dreams somehow they find their way to me. That's because I'm a tither. The tither provides the provision. God provides the provision. It is the most powerful prosperity principle in the world. Now, I know most of the people don't tithe. I get that. And most people are going to give me the hate comments. But that, I believe that that is what has made me successful. And I've never been really extremely wealthy. But I've never wanted for anything. Always lived in a nice home. Always had a nice car to drive. Always had good food to eat. Never wanted for anything. I was successful because I believe that God provided for me. So the first 10%, I put away to God, right? That's my tithe. That goes into the storehouse. Okay, now the second 10%, that's my savings money. Now, I was a saver, and I would save in currency. Now, currency is a terrible, terrible way to save. You have to save in real money. You have to turn that currency in to real money, to gold, to silver, right? Okay, that's how you have to save if you want to get wealthy, right? Because that's God's money. That's real money, not this fake stuff that the government prints up. I mean, it's, it might as well be monopoly money at this point. I mean, it's becoming worthless. It's going to go away. They're going to reset it, give you that digital, you know, central bank digital currency, the CBDC. They're going to give you those. Those are still fiat, though, and they're not backed by anything. You want real money. You want gold and silver, right? But Bitcoin, Mike, I want Bitcoin. What's Bitcoin backed by? It's backed by math, Mike. Don't you know anything? Math and magic. Look, at you take your chances on that, but I'd still call Bitcoin a fiat form of money, right? Not backed by anything. Gold, silver, real value used in the economy, used in every segment of the economy. It's got value. It's backed by something. That's the real money. And that's where I recommend saving if you want to see your money expand. You want to become wealthy. You want to grow. Now, why is the dollar going away? Well, here's the thing. Okay, here's the thing. Now, this also is why gold has been spiking up higher, right? Let's talk about this a little bit. Okay, so you've heard the statistic where we print a trillion dollars every hundred days, right? Every hundred days, we print a trillion dollars. Well, last month, the budget deficit was $380 billion just for the month, just for the month, right? So that took a trillion dollars every hundred days down to a trillion dollars every 80 days. That's what we're on pace for now, a trillion dollars every 80 days. Soon it will be a trillion dollars every 50 days, then every 30. Pretty soon it's going to be a trillion dollars a day. It's getting fast. In fact, we don't have much time left. I'm telling you, you're going to have to get out of the fake fiat currency, get into the coin of the realm, if you can, coin of the realm, pre-1965. In 1965, they took the money out of the money, so you got to buy coins, the dimes, the quarters, the half dollars, the dollars, before 1965, 90% silver. That's the money of our country. That's the coin of the realm. That's what you want to be saving in. 
Now, not a lot of people think I talk about this too much, and they're right. If I forget to talk about someone, leave me a comment, go, Mike, you didn't talk about real money today. Real money is what's going to save you when this all comes tumbling down. I get a lot of comments, but Mike, you've been talking about this for years and nothing's happened. You see, that's a guy with his head in the sand, right? I mean, he don't want to see it. He's lost 30, 40% of his purchasing power just the last four years. He don't want to hear about that. No, he doesn't want to hear about that. He doesn't have any real money. When it hits, he's going to be up a creek, right? Well, I'm trying to tell you that it's not too late. As long as they take that fake fiat currency for real money, then you still can turn it into the real money before the reset. We have a little bit of time left, right? That's just my take. Now, this is going to come tumbling down. Now, we've got an election. I don't know why anybody's trying to win the election, to tell you the truth. I think the, the, the winner is going to be the loser because in the next presidency, this all comes crumbling down. Now, if you're voting, now, here's how I would look at it. Now, when it all comes tumbling down, okay, you can blame either whosoever party's in power, the Democrats or Republicans. I I don't like either one of them to tell you the truth. But anyways, you can blame that party for crashing it, right? But who do you want to rebuild it? Now, if you want to rebuild it as a socialist, I guess you, you go with Kamala. If you want to build our country back to capitalism, which is going to get blamed, right? Capitalism is going to get blamed for this downfall. It's going to get blamed for the crash. You vote for the other guy if you want to rebuild with capitalism. Okay, so just do you want to be a socialist or you want to be a capitalist? That's basically the way I see it. Because it's going to crumble on either way watch, right? It's coming down. We don't have four years left. I'm sorry, we do not. It's going to all come tumbling down, right? And now, how do you want to rebuild the country? Now, what we've had is a failed experiment. You see, we've had a failed experiment with Keynesian economics. Keynesian economics is where the government comes and they fiddle with everything. You got the central banks in there printing the money, right? They're lowering and raising interest rates. That's Keynesian economics, and it's failed us miserably. Lost 98% of our purchasing power. We have to get back to the, well, what's Austrian economics, right? Free, uh, it's the free market, right? The free market. The market determines how much your house is, but you got to have real money in place first. It's going to be a painful, painful, painful reset. Most people are going to lose everything. Most pe A lot of people aren't going to survive. They're not going to be able to eat. They're not going to be able to feed themselves. It's going to be very sad. Look at our country it has serious, serious problems. The whole world does this is worldwide. It's the debt crisis is right. But I mean, we're like at the epicenter. I mean, our central bank is really the epicenter for us. They printed the most money, right? I mean, 35 trillion, 36 trillion, whatever we're at right now. And they're continuing to print. There's no end in sight. They're going to get that up to 50 trillion and they're doing it at a much faster pace, right? It took them 100 years to get rid of 98% of our purchasing power. They're going to take away that last 2% within the next four years. I think it's going to get wiped out. I really do. Just my opinion. I know you have a different opinion. That's perfectly cool. You're entitled to that. You see, I don't force my opinions on people. If they want to listen, they can come to my channel. They can listen. Look at when my friends, they don't want to hear it, so I don't talk to them about it, right? My family, they don't want to hear it. I don't talk to them about it. Look at people don't want to hear what you have to say. My advice would be to stop talking, right? But now we're on YouTube, and if you don't want to hear what I have to say, you can flip the channel. It's as simple as that. Now, a lot of people aren't smart enough to flip the channel. They have to come back every week just for the hate, right? They love to hate people. I don't get that. I really don't. You don't they have something better to do with their life? The answer is probably not, but that's just my take there. But anyways, this thing's come crumbling down, right? You want to build it back socialist? Do you want to be a socialist? I don't know. A lot of people do, apparently. Apparently, that's what they teach in high school. Now they teach that is the good thing. They, you know, People think we have capitalism in this country. We are the farthest thing away from capitalism and the free markets as you can get. Look, you got to get back to sound money if you want free markets. You have to get back to the gold and silver. That's the standard of, you know, uh, of sound money. And then you can have a free market. And that free market will increase your purchasing power. We can build this country back up. They've taken away 98% of it. They're going to take away the last 2%, but we can rebuild it. We can take the power back, right? We can take the power back. First, you have to get back to sound money. How do you do that? Me and you, we start a little quiet revolution, right? We pull our money out of the banks real quietly. Shh, they don't want you to pull your money out of the banks because then you're out of the system. Then they don't have control over you. And what do you do with the money when you get it? You put it into the real money, put it into the gold, put it into the silver. Then you got real money. Then you're saving in real money and you're 
savings will grow. You keep your money in that fiat system, your savings are just going to be depleted. They're going to steal it from you. They cannot steal the real money if you're holding the physical silver, right? Physical silver, cheap asset. I mean, we've broken above $30 now. I expect it to just keep exploding higher, right? I mean, but you see people, they they, they, they get excited about a dollar, two dollar move up or down and oh, Mike, it's going down. It's going down. Look, I'm not in it for the dollar or two dollar move when $30 becomes $300. And we'll talk about it. it might be time to start taking some off the table, but that's going to happen. It's going to be a 10x. It could be a lot bigger than that. It could be a 20x. That's just the way I see it. Maybe it does nothing. Maybe you're stuck with all that silver, all that real money, all that sound money. Maybe Maybe that's what happens. You know, I don't know how it plays out. I'm not a prophet. I'm really not. But this is what I'm doing. I get into the real money, right? I save. I'm a saver. I'm a tither. I tithe. I save. I do both of those things. That's what I do. If you like this stuff, give me the thumbs up. Get out there, everybody. Punch that subscribe button. Have a great day. We can talk again really soon. Bye-bye now.